Hello and assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen welcome to yet another episode of the dental talk today we have a very special guest with us here tonight ladies and gentlemen we have dr asad azaz chatta he is a maxillofacial surgeon at cms lahore medical college he is someone i've always looked up to i've gone to to further my passion in maxillofacial surgery he is an amazing person he has always helped me whenever i've asked for it he he guides anyone who approaches him uh, a brief introduction of him he did his bds uh back in 2004 from LMDC he then went on to do uh his post graduation after doing his FCPS in maxillofacial surgery uh from King Edward Medical University he is a fellow of the UICC the Union of International Cancer Control and also has the ICRAD fellowship in from for navigation assisted cancer surgery from Hanover Germany he has worked he has worked at Mayo Hospital for the past 10 years and then later moved to CMH as an associate professor Uh, in 2017 2018 he's also a phd scholar at king edward medical university he's also currently the treasurer treasurer at pakistan association of maxillofacial surgeons he is also a member of the royal college of surgeons from ireland he has a pretty amazing cv ladies and gentlemen he had a lot to teach us especially if you want to be a maxillofacial surgeon in the future this video is for you ladies and gentlemen so without further ado ladies and gentlemen dr asad azaz chatta Assalamu alaikum sir how are you Alhamdulillah I'm fine wa alaikum assalam sir how is the quarantine life going Quarantine life is a bit uh, different and difficult as it it is for all of you and uh, but still I mean this is the safe way out for all of us Definitely sir definitely sir first of all thank you so much for agreeing to do this it's an honor it's always an honor to talk to you sir No problem uh, it's my pleasure to be able to help you and uh, i mean uh, guide you any any time you want me but uh, uh, i'm i'm sorry because i couldn't give you time earlier in this week but uh, i no, no, support the time I, it's absolutely fine so sir with your permission should we start the interview ji ji yes okay sir so sir let's talk a bit about uh, you Inter- for the people who don't know you Uh, sir introduce yourself to our audience although i know most of the people watching this video already know you but still tell us a little bit about your journey through dentistry what made you get into bds and when did you decide you wanted to be a dentist and then your journey through your undergraduate years okay uh, very interesting story eh, mohammed <laughs> okay uh, uh, because my elder siblings were already into the medicine when i did my fsc and uh, uh mine was the f- second or third batch when the private colleges were starting in punjab so they were already established in sindh and uh, other provinces but uh, punjab was i mean just starting on to the private colleges mm-hmm. uh, i'm talking about medical and dental colleges so uh, uh i started my dentistry in 2000 and when i got into law medical dental college I, i had the opportunity to decide between mbbs and bds but as my uh, elder siblings were already uh, i mean doing uh, medicine i was not i mean more into the medicine i always wanted to become a dentist there were okay. there were a couple of reasons you know yeah uh, okay uh, because number one was it was a one year less Ah. and the the second was i i i at that time i thought that it might be a little easy to do it <laughs> because as to okay. be honest so so i got into lmdc in 2000 and there were couple of patches before already studying there but the, due to some technical reasons their exams were not conducting so uh, at the end of the day we merged three classes merged into one class and uh, we were the pioneer batch of lmdc and uh, it was a, it was a good journey i mean uh, we enjoyed a lot uh, while uh, uh, studying at lmdc uh, and because being the first batch there are few pros and cons for everything uh, being the first batch there was some privileges which we were enjoying and on the other hand there were some uncertainties at that point absolutely because we were not sure at that point whether uh these private colleges will be able to pull off the degree right. program or not because there were lots of lots of criticism going on as well so Absolutely. but at the end of the day 
uh, we were very lucky that uh, we got into the program and uh, it was it was a very good i um, mean uh, program at lmdc we have we had very nice um, bunch of uh, teachers for us yeah and we will we'll, we can we'll talk about those teachers yeah. in our coming questions as well so oh, okay I, I had a wonderful time in, in bds perfect sir perfect okay so sir if we talk about your early years as a dentist early years as a fresh graduate are always very hard for a young dentist so how were those early years those early two to three years after house job when you didn't really know how to pursue your passion mohammed it's a very important and interesting question because uh, those who have dentists in their families already uh, they have an edge that they get some kind of guidance from from their senior like their fathers or brothers or any other uh, i mean cousins but uh, interestingly i'll talk about myself i might be the only dentist in my last three generations so uh, so i was the one, only one in my in my family and uh, to be honest it is very important to teach our fresh graduates from the from the end of the second year or third year to to plan their future immediate after doing graduation um, and uh, that was a little drawback for me as well uh, I always wanted to go into uh, maxillofacial surgery, and uh, and we'll we'll definitely talk about that later in the in the interview. But uh, uh, as far as uh, uh, immediate uh, period post graduation period is concerned, uh, it was uh, it was very difficult for me to I mean decide what needs to be done. Uh, I I actually finished my house job at the end of the two thousand five. and uh, after that i went to england for my uh, i tried once for uh, international qualifying examination which is now called as ore okay. uh, at that time it used to call, be called as iqe okay okay so um, i was a little confused between uh, going abroad into uk or uh, or to pursue my i mean dream of surgery in pakistan but at that time uh, i decided to carry on with iq exam i went to england in 2006 and uh, gave it a try which uh, unfortunately i couldn't get through because there was a, a, a written exam part of exam and there was a viva as well yeah. so i i couldn't go through the viva at that time and there were a couple of reasons which i uh, sorted out immediately after the exam because uh, our oral medicine were not that strong as, as compared to our other subjects and uh, after that uh, i was i was fortunate to get into king edward medical university for my fellowship program and uh, then the journey continues till till today perfect sir beautiful beautiful story okay sir uh, you have already told us that you wanted to be a maxillofacial surgeon since the start but when did you know that that passion had started growing that when did you know that you wanted to be a maxillofacial surgeon okay uh, momo this is a very interesting story i mean uh, uh, you must be aware of uh, professor samir kazi yes absolutely uh, absolutely i mean we were in lmdc in second year and uh, someone told us that there is a new teacher joining and he's coming from ireland and he's he's very intelligent and very smart and he's a surgeon Okay. so we all were looking forward to it and uh, the day he joined uh, i mean he is a wonderful teacher he was yeah. a wonderful teacher Absolutely. and he is a beautiful teacher so we were very fortunate to have him with uh, our batch for 3 years okay uh, yeah. uh, the subsequent classes might have uh, him for only one year but we were lucky that he taught us first uh, uh, oral anatomy wow then wow. oral pathology and okay. then oral and maxillofacial surgery wow. so he was promoting with us because we were the first batch yeah so it was it was wonderful to have him as a teacher and probably that was the that was the point when i when i i mean wow. thought and i i wished at that time if at all i'll be able to be like him or get into surgery somehow so he was the initial driving force behind the wow. and uh, honestly speaking 
uh, with due respect to the other specialities, every specialty is is wonderful specialty, mm -hmm. but I never wanted to do anything else. Uh, I I have never done general dentistry after my house job. Yes, uh, I know that. I'm very really thankful to Allah Almighty that He has uh, guided me to Wonderful this, this position Wonderful where I'm today. Sir. Okay, so talking about maxillofacial surgery and general dentistry, how difficult do you think the life of a maxillofacial surgeon is when compared to that of a general dentist, if at all? Uh, I mean, I'm at both. Both are, I mean, uh, are difficult lives. Like in terms of uh, work, they do. Uh, they have a different kind of, uh, I mean, uh, paraphernalia of uh, these jobs. But uh, as far as maxillofacial surgery is concerned, it has evolved into a into a big specialty day by day. Uh, when we started our, uh, I mean, BDS back in 2000, uh, that was an era of oral surgery only. To be honest. Yes. Uh, and at that time, uh, when we graduated, it started, I mean, uh, developing or uh, uh, coming into oral and maxillofacial surgery. Uh, yeah. And uh, it, it is it is worth mentioning here that uh, uh, Professor Mohammad Said, who is the who is basically the father of oral surgery in Pakistan. Uh, uh, although he has never taught me directly, but uh, uh, we, we have a huge respect for him in our hearts because he actually started when he came back from England uh, after doing his FPS and he actually introduced oral surg surgery here and then uh, oral surgery uh, developed into oral and maxillofacial surgery here. The, the uh, part which was played by the, my teacher, Professor Riyaz Vodaj, he yes. he is the he is the one who has actually transformed oral surgery into oral, oral surgery. He's a wonderful Absolutely. teacher. He's a wonderful surgeon as well. So uh, this is the journey of uh, I'm talking about oral surgery to oral and maxillofacial surgery. Yes. As far as uh, comparison between general dentistry and I mean, Muhammad, it is a part and parcel of dentistry. Absolutely. We can never be we can never be separated from uh, general dentistry, uh, although. In yes. uh, Europe and America, uh, as you know, it is a dual qualification now. Absolutely, you yeah. you have to have a um, medical degree and a dental degree to to go Absolutely. into the Absolutely. maxillofacial course. But uh, in the subcontinent and uh, uh, in I mean in India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and Bangladesh, uh, we are still struggling with the same uh, pattern. But I mean. It's not bad to have a uh, uh, transformation from oral surgery into maxillofacial surgery without a medical degree because mm. uh, there, are, there are lots of, uh, I mean, uh, regulatory uh, issues uh, as far as uh, dual qualification is concerned. So hopefully in the future, uh, we will definitely transform into a uh, dual qualification uh, degree. But uh, uh, general dentistry, I mean, Maxillofacial surgery is a super speciality of dentistry. There is Absolutely. no doubt about it. And uh, uh, dentistry is, uh, uh, I, have, I, I, have, I know lots of experienced dentists who does uh, oral surgical procedures beautifully. I mean, uh, they, they didn't have any oral surgical training, uh, formal training like we did have, but uh, they are, they are I mean, putting their hand and they are... Uh, helping us out in treating the I mean, huge burden of disease in, the, in our society. Yeah. Absolutely. Perfect. Sir. So now let's uh, talk about your PhD at uh, King Edward Medical University. Uh, what is it about? What are you researching on? How did you become a scholar over there for PhD? Uh, okay, I'm on the, again, a very interesting story. Uh, <laughs> while I was in uh, King Edward uh, in 2017 till 2000, 2018, yeah. when I moved to CMH, uh, at the end of 2017, like in the mid of 2017, there was an ad in the in the in the newspaper that uh, King Edward Medical University is going to have an admission test for PhD scholars. Okay. Few of my colleagues already got into the program uh, a year back, so uh, they told me that uh, why don't you give it a try. So uh, at that time, I was not sure that whether I am going to stay in King Edward or not, but uh, uh, I mean. Uh, it is good to be a student again, you know, yeah. even, even though you are a bit old for that, but uh, <laughs> still I, I love to be a student. So I gave it a try and Alhamdulillah, I got through, there were only 12 seats and there were more than 40 candidates. 
and all those candidates were of uh, professorial i mean levels so uh, there was a written test first which uh, we got through then there was an uh, video clinical examination uh, okay. and then there was an interview so there were three steps and they they scrutinize it very i mean uh, in a very tough way yeah so uh, alhamdulillah i got into the phd program in 2000 at the end of the 2017 wow. and uh, now i have completed alhamdulillah all of my workshops and uh, my modules and uh, i'm going to start my research next year I'm, I'm due to this corona pandemic it's already delayed and uh, i'm my interest is in oral cancer like pre malignant lesions I, I've not decided uh, finally what I need to be doing in the PhD research because I'm working with my uh, couple of supervisors in King Edward. One of them is a bio, from biomedical science and uh, other one is a, is a biochemist. Okay. So uh, I'm not uh, sure at this point, uh, this point and what would be the particular topic, but it will definitely be oral cancer and pre lesions. Perfect. Perfect, sir. Okay. So, sir, you're an inspiration for many aspiring surgeons, for many aspiring dentists who want to be a maxillofacial surgeon in the future. Uh, so, for me, if I want to be a maxillofacial surgeon in the future, right out of house job, what should the mindset of a young dentist be if they want to be a maxillofacial surgeon specifically? Again, Mohammed, it is very important. Uh, what I have learned over a period of time that uh, whatever you do, you must be clear in your mind. Absolutely. Uh, from the from the uh, start of your, uh, I mean, uh, uh, career, like the day you graduate, even before doing your graduation, uh, there were there were few of my class fellows who were who were very clear that they they are going to be general dentists. Mm. So they even started their own clinics right after graduation, and mashallah, they have developed into a into a renowned names in our society Absolutely. at this point. So. Uh, uh, nothing is inferior and nothing is superior as far as the specialties is concerned. So, uh, first of uh, first of all, it's important that you must be aware what do you need to be doing in your future. Uh, I mean, you you like prosthodontics, you like oral surgery, you like orthodontics. Uh, if you are clear in your mind, it is important to decide whether you want to go into a teaching speciality or you want to become a specialist. So it is very important that you you have a have a plan in your mind about the speciality you want to choose. Number one, as far as your question is concerned for maxillofacial surgery, uh, if uh, I, I have to advise someone at this point, if you can afford to go to states or somewhere where you can have a dual qualification, nothing like that. Okay, because. Uh, uh, being 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 your teacher i want you to be uh, better than me so uh, what i think that medical degree is very important because uh, maxillofacial surgery when you are treating a patient uh, you are treating the whole of the patient like you yeah. you have seen our surgeries we do a lot of uh, reconstruction and all that if you if you do if you are not aware of the anatomy of the whole of the body and the and the physiology and biochemistry you, it's very difficult to i mean uh, uh, Absolutely. Cope with the cope with the yep. cope with the yep. difficulties of the specialty. So, uh, if you can afford to go to a dual qualification program, it 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 should be your number one choice. If you cannot somehow, I mean, there are lots of financial issues and uh, other issues. Uh, locally, FCPS is is a wonderful degree. It is a very good program, and uh, now uh, being into CPSP and all that, I uh, being the supervisor and examiner. Um, our seniors are doing a, a good job to develop into a dual qualification in coming years and days. Let's hope we can do it uh, earlier than later. And uh, if we can have a good program here, I mean, uh, there is no need to go abroad. But at this point, FCPS and now MDS in King Edward and other institutions, it, it is it is a, of good standard now. And uh, it is a good opening for, for, uh, for someone who is... Uh, who wants to be a maxillofacial surgeon? Because uh, one thing I tell you, Mohammed, uh, like all specialities, in if in if you want to become a maxillofacial surgeon, if you if you don't like surgery from from inside, yeah. I mean, you cannot survive longer. Um, yeah. um, let me be very clear. Absolutely. Because uh, it it needs a lot lots of devotion, 
and in the start you might not have that much money rolling into your uh, i mean pocket uh, when you become a consultant but uh, with the i can assure you with the passage of time if you keep on working i mean money comes along perfect perfect sir so building on the same question um many argue that maxillofacial surgeons uh firstly it's a very saturated field in pakistan secondly they don't earn as much just what you've stated so what are your comments about this and how do you, how does one tackle this uh interesting uh, mohammed you know bread and butter of all the dentistry specialties is general dentistry you know absolutely and uh, uh, there is no doubt about it and i can assure you that uh, in existing conditions yeah. more than 95% of current maxillofacial surgeon working in pakistan are doing general dentistry as well yeah they have their clinics and fair enough they they have the degree and they have the exposure they they can do it but uh, if if you'll ask me i mean uh, i would like to do what i what i know um, good because i i i i want to be a, i wanted to be a specialist i alhamdulillah become a specialist i i i might not be good in doing root canals and all that and i just don't want to waste my energies and time yeah. i might be able to earn a lot of money in doing root canals and uh, all that but uh, uh, i have i've decided to do only surgical procedures yeah. like um, the the whole scope of maxillofacial like trauma oncology orthognathics yeah patholo oral head and neck pathology so uh, uh, it's true that uh, the maxillofacial surgery is the largest specialty of dentistry at this point in time we are alhamdulillah more than 350 in pakistan at this yeah. point because uh, as you know we, i am the treasurer of paoms pakistan association of oral yeah. maxillofacial surgeons uh, uh, so uh, i have all their data with me yeah. we have more than 350 registered Ma- maxillofacial surgeons in pakistan yeah. but still if you will compare with the other specialties like uh, orthopedics i mean we are far far behind from them so yeah. as far as your income is concerned you must have a very clear i mean thing in your mind mohammed that whatever is written in your fate i mean you will get it yeah okay so uh, my advice will be be very clear keep your uh, i mean uh, head straight and uh, do your work i mean money definitely will keep on rolling perfect sir perfect okay so let's talk about something that i'm sure you've been hearing a lot these days uh the corona virus uh mm-hmm. who knew that a pandemic like this would affect our profession more so than other professions so how do you see dentistry progressing in a post covid 19 era and what repercussions would there be specifically for head and neck surgeons uh, as you have mentioned uh, mohammed that our area is the source of infection you know yep absolutely. like uh, orthopedic surgeons they can operate on the lower limb and uh, by covering the mouth and nose yeah. and all that by putting a tube inside the patient and they can cover it up but unfortunately general dentist and our specialty we have to operate in oral cavity and solve full of virus god yeah. forbid if patient is infected yeah. so uh, number one is it, these are very difficult times for all of us uh, including uh, general dentist and uh, keeping uh, in mind that uh, those who are in teaching jobs have a little bit support by their their pay and all that but yes. all those who are uh, uh, i mean uh, relying completely on their clinics it is very difficult time for them to Absolutely. cope up with the uh, with the expenditures only i mean you can imagine uh, the bills of electricity yeah. and all that and your Absolutely. employees and Brand. your dental materials so uh, uh, i mean like all of us uh, i'm keeping my fingers crossed to and praying to god that uh, allah almighty can uh, help us out of this pandemic Inshallah. but uh, um, in on the on the in the same time we have to i i think we have to start doing work ahmed mohammed at at some time uh, with taking uh, uh, all the precautions which which are i mean uh, rampantly available yeah. on social media and everywhere and uh, as you know the universal precautions number one rule take every patient as an infected patient yeah so uh, uh, as far as i am concerned uh, i have operated uh, quite a few patients in, in these 2 3 months but uh, uh, lately i have decided to get 
tested each of my patient for COVID-19. Right. That is unfortunately not possible for general dentists because yes. uh, you cannot ask patient that I'm going to examine you and you go and uh, get your test done. <laughs> Okay, so let's get back to maxillofacial surgery. So you became a maxillofacial surgeon during the early part of this decade, and you've seen maxillofacial and you became and you got into BDS in early two thousand, and you've seen maxillofacial surgery change over the past twenty years. How much do you think there is still scope of technology being introduced into maxillofacial surgery? What's the future of maxillofacial surgery like? For example, robots, new, newer techniques. Where do you see maxillofacial surgery going in the future? Very interesting, Mohammed. Uh, uh, there is a long haul, I, I can assure you. Absolutely. Because uh, as you know, I've been to Germany for a, one of the, my navigation assisted cancer yep. surgery fellowships. Yes. So uh, we are, I mean, almost 100 years behind them. So okay. uh, they're, they're already using navigation for the head and neck reconstruction. Uh, they, are, they are using, uh, I mean, uh, uh, navigation assisted uh, uh, orthogonetic surgeries. They are, oh. I mean, they are using all kinds of technologies and robotic surgery as well. Although yeah. I have not seen robotic surgery by myself. One of yeah. my friends we, uh, who came from UK in the last yeah. symposium, you might have, yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, Dr. Ahmed, he is from Bangladesh. He is a he is a backfax in London, and he is basically an expert in uh, robotic, robotic surgery. Thing. Absolutely. So yeah. he um, sometimes I mean send me pictures working on a console <laughs> and operating on them, and and it is it is a quite an uh, I mean uh, difficult uh, training uh, as far as you have to learn the uh, robotic surgery because yeah. first you have to you I mean uh, get familiar yourself with the console and the, that particular program which you are using. Yeah. And you have to do it on um, lots of uh, cadavers. And yeah. after that, when, when you are uh, having a good hand, then you can go on to the to real patients. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, Mohammed, it is a, um, lots of scope. Yeah. Uh, but it will definitely increase the cost of treatment. Um, uh, in Germany, when I was there back in 2012, they were using an um, uh, Brain Lab uh, 3 version at that time. Okay. And uh, at that time, it was, um, I mean, more than 10 millions uh, machine. Okay. So wow. only the machine. So uh, you can imagine that first you have to get that machine. Then you have to have all the paraphernalia for that machine. Like you have to have that, uh, those labor labs, which where you can f uh, make the custom made uh, implants. You can make yeah. the custom made meshes. Yeah. So, uh, but it's, it is not difficult. I mean, yeah. Uh, one thing I tell you, the amount of trauma and work we're doing in Pakistan, Alhamdulillah, uh, we're doing a good job. Yes. I've seen uh, people working in international hospitals and uh, I've, I've worked with them. Uh, our, our people are, mashallah, very good with, with uh, lots, I mean, uh, with, with not having that, those technologies with us, but yeah. still there's lots of scope. And uh, for, as far as endoscopic surgeries are concerned, for uh, orbital floor reconstructions, for condylar uh, fractures, they are using uh, uh, endoscopic surgeries nowadays. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, lots of things can be done. But uh, in my personal opinion, we are evolving into a dual qualification. That should be the first step. And then we can yeah. build on, on top of it. Perfect, sir. Okay. So, sir, this is a question that my team wanted to ask you. These two questions specifically. Please. Please. Uh, what, firstly, what is the most dif difficult and unique surgery that you've ever done in your career? And secondly, what would your advice be specifically to females who want to become maxillofacial surgeons? Okay. I'll take the second part first. Uh, okay. 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 Uh, there's, there's a lots of room for female maxillofacial surgeons. Um, unfortunately, in our society, uh, you do not come across a ve uh, very, very uh, good female surgeons, in, in not specifically in maxillofacial surgery, in, in general surgery as well. Yeah. In general surgery, in, in surgical uh, I mean, uh, discipline, there's lots of scope. And uh, I'll definitely recommend uh, maxillofacial surgery to the female surgeons because, as you know, the, we we work in a very small cavity, uh, and uh, we need to have finer movements, precision, and, and fi 
and small and fine hands can uh, yeah. help we we being males have larger <laughs> hands and you know top so my okay. my recommendations will be to to carry on with their uh, 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 careers if they want to pursue medical surgery as Perfect. far as females are concerned okay and wh- the other question was the most interesting surgery it's very difficult to i mean tell you because there's quite a lot of them and uh, 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 once once we were doing in um, there was an interesting case of uh, osteoma at the at the condylar uh, at the subcondylar level okay in the mandible so uh, normally you know when the tori and con- osteomas they come off very easily when you will try yeah. to chip off or Absolutely. you have Absolutely. to you have to divide them into smaller pieces and then you can mm-hmm. take them out one by one but this area is very difficult you know the subcondylar yeah, area so absolutely uh, i had a couple of my junior colleagues with me so we decided to go from extra orally and and i was very confident that i'll be able to take it out easily wow. i'll chip it, chip it off with a chisel and that that's it but when i did it i mean i i i i mean came to know that i have got a fractured condyle with that so oh. when when that came out and the whole of the piece came out and i realized that the condyle and osteoma both are out i oh. mean i was uh, quite uh, worried at that time that uh, patient came for an osteoma removal <laughs> so uh, uh, at that time a little innovation came into and i i just removed that uh, osteoma part from the condylar uh, subcondylar region within uh, uh, within round bar and the flame bar and and i reshaped that condyle okay. into the original original condylar shape so oh wow and <laughs> alhamdulillah we were able to put that back into as a fractured condyle so oh perfect uh, we we uh, we were able to put two plates in and uh, i have all the pictures with me if you are interested sometime i can show you alhamdulillah patient Absolutely. is doing perfectly fine out there absolutely sir but uh, these are small compli- uh, small complications which always occur yeah. and uh, I, i always i mean like to tell my complications to my students that yeah. from there i mean uh, they can learn patient, the patient patient who went well i mean it's not a big deal yeah. in the patient where you have learned something yourself it, yeah. it is important to tell important. J- just like uh, this i was doing a, a fungal infection patient uh, almost a year back she had a large fungal infection into the posterior part of the maxilla and going into the orbital floor and the pterygoid and all that and but interestingly there was nothing in the in the front of maxilla so i was quite worried that how should i approach this approach. area and uh, the the most uh, popular approach could have been that i do a leaf foot burn start me and get into the but that would have been a little more for that lien because the lien was only on one side so i decided to do a, a box osteot me so we're done with our interview just some last words for our startup what do you think about the startup and any advice that you would like to give us i mean i mean really happy to see you i mean uh, transforming into an, uh, an a, a good presenter and all that and uh, i Thank i you. wish you all the Uh, uh, all the luck in your future and you, uh, all for all of you it's my advice is that uh, don't get panic with the, the recent pandemic i mean yeah. it it is for whole of the world everyone is suffering yeah. so uh, keep your fingers crossed keep on praying uh, and i i i believe that allah almighty will forgive all of us and uh, will get a good solution for us and as far as your uh, quarantine days are concerned uh it is uh, i think i it, it is a very difficult time for all of us you Absolutely. you should not i mean waste this time i will advise you to i mean uh, keep on uh, studying something related to your own uh, interests as far as your uh, dentistry is concerned and you can uh, always uh, i mean uh, see your uh, i mean videos from the youtube and yeah. I mean, uh, the internet is full of all these videos and uh, lectures and Absolutely. you can always take help from your teachers and i am always there to help you out in any in any condition and uh, looking forward to help you okay thank you so much sir thank you so much for taking time out from your busy schedule it uh, was an honor hearing from you it was it was an honor interviewing you thank you so much it's it's my pleasure mohammed and all the best to all of you thank you so much sir thank you so much allah take, allah take care and stay safe allah.